Hi hi everyone, welcome to Wayne's Secret. It's Karen here. I hope you don't mind, I've got my air conditioner on today so it's a little bit noisy. It is needed because it is absolutely boiling hot and very, very humid. Um, so it's needed I'm afraid, I'm really sorry about that. So um, we're starting off just with a, a basic white bath bomb um, recipe. Uh, because we are making Instagram bath bombs. This is the mold here that I'm using. So in this container I have got 2.4 kilos of bicarb, 36 grams of SLSA, it, that's optional. It's, if you're gonna take it out, you don't need to change any of the other measurements in your bath bomb recipe. Uh, I've increased the carrier oil compared to my other recipes that you might have seen before to 30 grams um, just because I've been told that you need a little bit wetter um, recipe if you're going to be using these plastic molds um, 24 grams of fragrance and 38 grams of witch hazel now I'm just that's all been mixed together in my Hobart mixer so it's well mixed up. I'm not wearing gloves because I've been wearing gloves this morning. It's so warm and humid that my hands sweated so much that my fingers ended up poking through the rubber gloves anyway. I didn't even get six bath bombs made and that happened. So I'm just not gonna wear gloves. So I'm adding 1.150 kilos. So that's it's one yeah 1.150 grams of citric acid this is the granular citric acid not the powdered and it works fine for me I know in the olden days I swore by the powdered but I find this works absolutely fine if you do want you can find powder and you want to use it if you've got a vitamix or anything similar like that you can just grind your citric acid up into a powder yourself and as long as you don't add any um, fragrance or anything you're fine to do that in your kitchen appliances it's only the fragrance that tends to taint any kitchen wear that you might have. Okay, so these are for now just nice plain white bath bombs. I am going to do something to them later on. Um, so they won't look white when they're finished. No embeds or anything, we're just working our way through the bath bomb series. Um, from scratch and just trying to make things as simple as possible this will not make a mess of your bath at all anyone who is watching that doesn't know why that happens a lot of it is down to when you have a bath your skin you've got a lot of loose skin and you've got oils on your skin that need to be washed off so when you wash those off in the bath you always get a layer around the bath i mean everybody knows that so when the, these colors stick to the side of the bath it's just the color in the bath water sticking to your oils and your skin so it's always best to wash your bath out properly first um i know i'm sure most people like me just wash the bath out every time they've used it but if you don't um, and you want to use a bath bomb that has lots of colour and things in and glitter um, the cleaner your bath is the less cleaning up you're going to have after you've had your bath okay so our mixture is well um, mixed up now so I've got a little bit of bath bomb left over from the last batch that I did so I'm just going to mix that in as well now 
Now I find I have found that these um, these flat plastic molds are a little bit harder to use than the metal ones um, because they've got intricate detail. You need to press the mixture down very well into all the corners. So I just add some of the mixture in and press it right down right into the corners all over the bottom because obviously we've got a camera lens and a button there to fill in so once that's done then you can just add some more loose bath bomb base into your mold now you it's hard to get that bottom flat um, I've seen some people rub the whole tip it upside down and rub it on the work surface but that doesn't actually work for me so once I've added that next layer I start at the center and then I press out towards the edges like so And because they're plastic they are flexible when you when you're doing this so you can actually get cracks in some of your bath bombs which again I've had and I know I will get even more uh, in the future because if you can't get that base really flat and it's say it's thicker in the center than it is on the outside then when you try to lay it flat on your worktop it it's it will crack so what i'm doing to try and avoid that other people rub their bath bomb flat on the work surface i'm just getting the back of a spoon and I'm pressing that down as hard as I can in the center and then I'm going to go all the way around the bath bomb squeezing every little grain that I can as tightly down as I can other people might have other techniques that work very well for them uh, but for now this one is the one that is working for me if you've got any tips write them in the comments below and then I can read them or other people can read them the other thing I've found is for, again for me it's better to have a little bit of a gap between your bath bomb and the top of the mould and that's for when you're actually tapping that bath bomb out it seems to work better at releasing the bath bomb because there's a little bit of air there and a little bit of room for manoeuvre so it's a bit of work I have to say a bit too much work for me to be honest right so now it's time to turn that out and I always find with any flat bath bombs like this it's always better to turn them out onto some kitchen roll just turn it over and tap and then what I do is I just lift the sides up with my fingers underneath and just gently tap it up up and down like so until it drops out of the mold now you might get a little bit of bath bomb that hasn't quite stayed in play, place so gently just press that on like so and then the other thing that I've learned that I feel I must do with these is wipe them out after every single release anyone has any more hints and tips on that let me know and then we'll just 
just go on for the next one. Nothing's ever simple, is it, with manufacturing products like this. Why on earth did that company actually make a bath bomb in the first place? Who was it, that company, the company that invented bath bombs? Oh yeah, it was Lush. It's all their fault. It's Lush's fault that I'm doing all of this. because someone actually bought me a gift from Lush I'd never heard of them they bought me a gift box from Lush uh, for my birthday, my 40th birthday I'm 55 now and I loved it that much that I was obsessed with going in the bath from that moment on because I just thought it was absolutely awesome what I'd gotten in this in this gift box and also like the thought the way it looked it was described to me because I had never been in one oh you go in there and they've got these massive blocks of soap um, and they just chop bits off and weigh them and off you go so I imagined like a soap mountain which it is a mountain but it, it is a mountain of soap that they have but um, I imagined like one soap, not many different soaps in blocks. I imagined it on the floor, literally in the shape of a mountain. Um, and you would go in and cut pieces off. And from that moment on, I was literally addicted to Lush. And, and at the time, I must have bought everything they did. I mean, this is 15 years ago. Um, I don't know if I bought all of the moisturizers and things, but I had every bath bomb, every soap, all the shampoo bars, um, all the bubble bars and massage bars, all of them, and I'd literally bought all of them then. I mean, I think they have a much bigger range now than they did back then. And that is where my obsession with making these products began. So they do look so lovely just lined up all pretty and perfect and white don't they they're not going to stay white though so what I'm doing with the uh, the bath bomb diaries playlist is it's going to start right at the beginning with uh, mixing all of your ingredients we've also got um, a making bath bombs with mica video so making bath bombs with mica we're ha gonna have making bath bombs with water dispersible colors and um, this will all be also be exactly the same as the DIY bath bombs from scratch both playlists will be exactly the same so we'll be doing as I said uh, bath bombs with water based colours uh, we'll be doing we're going to progress right through um, 
into making bath bomb embeds um, painting on bath bombs which you've already seen um, and then actually putting bath embeds in the bath bombs to eventually create a beautiful bath art in your bath so that should help anybody that's learning how to make bath bombs and just a bit of a disclaimer here you know the humidity in the country where you live or the area where you live it all makes a difference so you might need to tweak all these uh, little ideas that I come up with but I know that um, I will be saving you a lot of time and a lot of money with all the hints and tips that I'm giving out which goes for all of my videos um, you know I'm spending money uh, so you don't have to uh, because I'm learning you know what works and what doesn't and that honestly in the long run will actually save you an absolute fortune because it costs a lot of money it really does you know you can't take it lightly um, it costs a lot of money to learn how to make products a lot so I hope I know I know that you're grateful you tell me every day how grateful you are um, so thank you that you are grateful because that means a lot to me that you do understand and you do care and you've always been very very kind to me here on YouTube so thank you for that so there they all are lined up um, obviously it's given me a lot more space I need to get rid of these ones that I made yesterday I did make um, these were my practice Instagram bath bomb uh, but I put a little bit too much witch hazel in them uh, thinking I needed my mixture to be wetter I added more witch hazel but maybe I should have added more oil and not and the same amount of witch hazel I don't know um, but I can already tell that using the recipe that we're using today um, they're not going to be anywhere near as grainy on the outside so I need to just remove move those bath bombs there that I've just unmolded those yellow ones at the back and um, get some more kitchen roll laid out uh, to make some more of these Instagram bath bombs. Also, I just thought I'd quickly show you this, how paint scrapers are absolutely fantastic for getting all of your little granules of spilt bath bomb base off your counter. Anything with a flat surface like a palette knife, um, but I prefer the paint scrapers just because the palette knife is set in a different way like you've got the handle and then the palette knife comes out long ways the handle on these is on the top so I've got a couple of these this one's a bit older and a bit more decrepit but I do use them all the time so we've got quite a nasty crack on this one and again this is because the center was too thick compared to the outside it's deeper in the center than it is on the outside so the outside's falling down and it wants to touch the work surface and that's why it's cracked so i've got to try to be more careful and not do that so i'm literally just going to take that and i'm going to put it back in the container and break it up the other thing with plastic molds is i do think the bath bomb needs to be unmolded straight away um, i don't think the plastic likes a bath bomb to be left in the mold it uh, sort of disintegrates it somewhat
and then over here we're just going to break up that mold that that, that that bath bomb that we made because what's actually quite surprising is it won't fit back in the mold now if i try to put it in the mold it will have swelled a little bit off with long fingers for doing this job So I've got a new Disney YouTube channel that I like watching. It's called Paging Mr. Morrow. Um, I still love the trackers, but they've had a baby now. And uh, obviously I've got a baby. He's 21. Well, I've got two babies. One is 54, that's my husband. And the other baby is, is my real baby, my son. Um, so much as I love them it's it's nearly all about the baby now so I'm really happy I found another channel that I absolutely love uh, so I'll, I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description box below I mean it might not be for you and it might seem a bit sad a 55 year old woman being obsessed with with going to Disney but it just makes you so happy, honestly. I love it. I wish I could live there. Like I said before, if, um, not if the world ended, but if, if it ended up where there weren't very many of us living on the planet and we could do that and find our way, I would literally be going to live on Main Street, USA which is at the Magic Kingdom. Or oh, the other thing is they actually have uh, houses now that you can buy. It's called Golden Oaks. Um, so, you know, very expensive properties like millions of dollars to go and buy these houses to live at. But one of those would do as well. The candy shop's mine. I'm the one that wants to go and make all your candy apples and all your sweet treats. So, if you could go anywhere like that, being one of the last people alive on earth, where would it be?
right that's it for today's video um tomorrow well not tomorrow but the next day because we upload a video every other day here at Eden Secret uh, we're going to be putting some colour onto these bath bombs so we're going to be spraying them with mica and rubbing alcohol so don't forget to tune in for that thanks for watching this video today if you liked it give me a subscribe a thumbs up and please place a comment in the description box below i'll see you very very soon bye bye for now